Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now set for the knockout night at the D, main event of the evening. Scheduled for 10 rounds of boxing for the NABF and the vacant WBO Intercontinental Super Flyweight Championships. Presented to you by Roy Jones Jr. Boxing Promotions. The D Las Vegas, long on fun, short on ordinary, and neon star media. Brought to you by Art of Music, your number one source for collectible memorabilia. Visit artofmusiclv.com and Rival Boxing. Sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Chairman Anthony Marnell, Commissioners Francisco Aguilar, Skip Evancino, Dr. Dan Carpenter, Michonne Martin, NABF Supervisor in Attendance, Dwayne Ford, WBO Supervisor in Attendance, Michael Pernick, and our Executive Director, Bob Bennett. The three judges scoring on this championship bout, Adelaide Bird, Patricia Morse Jarman, Ricardo Ocasio. And the third man in the ring, our referee in charge of the action at the bell, Russell Mora. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the downtown Las Vegas Event Center, the temperature is rising, the lights are bright, and the main event has arrived. Fight fans of Las Vegas, everybody! Go local! Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. Tonight, wearing black camouflage. His official weight, 115 pounds. His professional record is an impressive one. At 21 victories, with 18 wins coming by way of knockout against two defeats. He is the current IBF Pan American Super Flyweight Champion and the NABF Super Flyweight Challenger from Bago City, the Philippines, by way of Los Angeles, California. Please welcome Mighty Aston Balite. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the red corner. Wearing black, trimmed in gold. His official weight, 114 pounds. His professional record is perfect. At 14-0, with one win coming by way of knockout. He is the defending NABF Super Flyweight Champion. He is the fighting pride of Kingsville, Texas. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Lil Oscar. Centering, gentlemen. Okay, trunks here are good. Trunks here are good. Gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want to remind you, protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. God bless you both. Touch up. Should be a good one, ladies and gentlemen. Ten round schedule. As we take a look at the tail of the tape, Joey Varner, what do you see? And we see the same age, same height. Same weight, same reach on paper. These guys are almost identical. Oscar Cantu, little Oscar, 14 and 0. Ashton Felicte, 21 and 2. Felicte, 18 knockouts on his record, seven coming in the first round. Keep that in mind. Nice left by Felicte. We asked Felipe what are the keys to winning? Simple answer, keep punching. One of the things that the Cantu camp talked about, they recognize the punching power of Palikte, but they said when he loads up, he punches from his chest, he drops his hands. That's one area of his game that the Cantu camp thinks that they can exploit, take advantage of, and make him pay. The Palikte camp also thought that the great record of Oscar Cantu was largely perhaps a product of the location. 
fighting mostly in the state of Texas. Which ironically is almost the same thing that the Cantu camp said about a Palik day. And they yeah. said he, him fighting in the Philippines. Everybody's got a story. And the only one way to settle these uh, debates and discussions is what we're seeing right now. Oscar Cantu, the perhaps the more polished, pure boxer in this uh, matchup. We'll see how those skills evolve and develop as far as it relates to slipping punches and avoiding contact. Making them miss and making them pay. Nice, uh, nice intentions of that uh, big old looping a uh, right hand by Palikte. Didn't connect, but you saw the intent, the thought process, very evident. Cantu is the undefeated fighter here. Palikte has two losses. One loss, he says, was a, was just a robbery. He fought in Mexico. He thought he dominated his opponent, and it was a home down decision. But the other loss, he says, he fell in love with his power. He took training a little lackadaisical. He didn't do his best. He went in there thinking that he could knock his opponent out. He lost because of that. And he says that that loss was probably one of the best things that happened to his career as a fighter. South Texas well represented, as we mentioned earlier. Well, I'll tell you what, Ashton Felicte has got a really nasty looking right hand. And he's landing it. He's landing it. He's finding a home for it. Nice counter punching by Oscar Cantu. Good. Round one of a 10 rounder scheduled for 10. Two titles on the line. Two men, as we saw the tail of the tape, Joe, that are very, very similar as far as size, reach, weight. Different, different philosophies. We get that. You know, the one thing that stood out to me in this first round is, is Contu was very positive that as the as a pure boxer, when it comes to the art of boxing, that he had the upper hand in this. But in watching their engagements, it seemed like they're very well matched. Well, there's, there's half of, of uh, Kingsville right there. <laughs> I mean, it's it's a city with a population of 300. If the bank gets robbed or not in Kingsville, we'll know why. All right, here we go, round two. Two titles on the line, two very highly skilled fighters. And uh, we have seen the draw tonight, which is very unusual for our boxing Stop. series. I can't recall another draw that we've had. No, no. So uh, the odds are this one will not end with a draw. The question is, can Cantu navigate 10 rounds against a puncher? And can the puncher, go, mighty stop. Ashton no, Palipte, no, no. Come here. earn another Get knockout? Your Get your head up. Don't push him down. Well, Palikte was confident coming into this fight. He said this is going to be his best performance. And when he's on the big stage, first fight in Vegas, first fight on national television, his mindset is go big or go home. Palikte has been in the state since December the 1st, approaching three weeks. And uh, Manny Pacquiao got uh, a nice exchange. Palikte uh, took the opportunity to train it. The great Freddie Roach's uh, wild card gym in Los Angeles. If Cantu is able to edge his way ahead in this fight and walk away with the victory, his camp made it abundantly clear that they've been eyeing the fight with Roman Gonzalez. They think they have the tools, the recipe, Stop. Stop. the ability to solve the puzzle that is Chocolatito. But tonight, he's got to get past the power-punching Filipino to even think about a fight with Chocolatito. I was going to use that name as my announcing name, but I, <laughs> I reevaluated that decision. Cantu with 130 amateur fights, an Olympic alternate. Oscar is uh, managed by his father. 
Really a nice man. A uh, retired military. Get all respect in the world for that gentleman. And, and you know, not just the father, the whole camp. You know, we had a chance to sit down with his dad, and he told us about how he built the camp around him, the kind of people they brought in. They wanted to bring in a support system that was in line with their belief system, and that everyone brought a certain element to the table to help groom Stop. and bring their fighter to, to, to the top to maximize all his potential. But look to you, just very aggressive. The mindset is very aggressive. And this is why Oscar can too. Is just he's got a slip punch of the left hand by Ashton Palikte. You can hear the impact. Stop, Neko, Neko. These uh, super flyweights are are throwing entry, down. Entry. Okay, stop. Great first two rounds, Jr. I don't know how you see it. I'm kind of leaning two rounds to none for Pelikte right now. Well, I, I I couldn't make the argument either way, but it, it's very very close. I'm I'm sitting on the fence here. You, you I, know, I'm compromising my comfort zone by sitting on the <laughs> straddling the old fence. <laughs> Let's take, take a look back at some of that action, and there's Pelikte pressing forward. They're trading punches. Palikte rolling under the hook of Kantu, landing his overhand, landing his left. Great action from both fighters. Now let's take a look into the corner of Oscar Kantu. Good. Look good. Look good. That's a close round there, so How about that one, sir? I got that. He's little Oscar to his friends. That's his dad talking to him. Mr. Kantu, a 23 year uh, veteran of the military retired and just to make it clear his dad is not big oscar no as we thought no he's high man even though he's called big oscar from time to time <laughs> they told us that oscar likes to break his fights down into three three fights within one three different segments that he'll focus on so now we're we're at the end of the first segment of how they approach their strategy Round four will start a new segment for them. We'll see if it changes their strategy or game plan whatsoever. Notice on the trunks of uh, the champion, Oscar Cantu, I am not ashamed, referring to his religious beliefs. And WWJD, my partner, Joey Barner, explained that one to me. What would Jesus do? Kids has ever seen that on the combat tights before, trucks. Stop. But, but you know what? For for Oscar Kantu, his faith plays such a large role in his fight, in, in in his in his life, not just as a boxer, but outside the ring. He uses his accomplishments in the ring to reach out to young kids in the neighborhood and spread the word of God. So he's a man of faith who's using his fighting capabilities free, to spread the word. Free. So kudos to him. Yeah, very know? very admirable. He says, "I do boxing." To do God's work. Okay, stop. And these exchanges, just like that, they both meet in the center. They they trade a three-four punch combo, both landing, and it's exchanges like that that are so hard to score. Oh, and a big left hook snaps back the head of Kantu. Kantu continues to move his head, however. When I see a punch land like that and the fighter's neck is snapped back, the first thing I do is look at his legs. How are his legs? Are they robbery? Are they, are they, are they wobbly? Do they look like they're still under him? Another nice exchange. Palictes. Keeping his word as far as his strategy is concerned, just keep punching. Okay, stop. Let go, let go. A fiery main event in progress. Two super flyweight titles are on the line. And you're seeing it live.
on CBS Sports Network as they're firing up here at the end of the round. We're back live in Las Vegas. Bell sounds for round four of a scheduled 10 rounder. This is our main event. Oscar Cantu defending his NABF Super Flyweight Championship against uh, the man from the Philippines, Aston Felicte. In JR, it's been a back and forth battle up to now. I think that as two boxers, they're both trading back and forth at an equal amount, but I think the power advantage has to go to Palikte, which could actually be putting him ahead of the cards. You never know, but he seems to be landing the better shots in every engagement as he does right now. Good left hand by Palikte, staggering Oscar Cantu somewhat. Second time the fight that's happened. The, uh, the legs get a little linguine-like. Spaghetti legs, in other words. Great counter punching by Palikte. Cantu's got to move. He cannot stand in front of a power puncher. It's just going to, the collateral damage is going to be too much. You know, Palikte is uh, the research we've done. He, a lot of people call him the predator. And you can see that predator mentality of a man with 18 knockouts and 21 wins. Well, he told us in his fighter meeting, this fight, he's the hunter, Cantu is the hunted. He's going to stalk his opponent and put him away. Oscar would be well served to use his jab, stick and move, get out of the way, don't stand in front of the power puncher. The, the problem I'm seeing right now, JR, is Coming into this fight, Kantu was banking on his ability to outbox Palikte. And right now, it seems like they're even when it comes to the pure art of boxing. So that, that, that card is pulled out of the equation, and now it's left with two boxers who are equal in the skill level, but one packs a mean punch and the other doesn't. Looping left by Ashton Palikte. You know, when some people compare this 25-year-old Palikte to Manny Pacquiao, it's very easy to roll one's eyes. But the one thing about the, the thing they have in common, they're both battlers. They're both, they, they like to engage. Absolutely. Stop. They let go, let go. do not shy away from a fight. Absolutely not. What a nice round. Good, good combination by Oscar Cantu. That will make the folks from Kingsville, Texas, happier. We mentioned that this is a double title match. Cantu's defending his NABF uh, Super Flyweight title and the vacant WBO Super Flyweight title also at stake here. And here we see Palikte pressing the action. Cantu firing back. Again, the jab, the overhand. Palikte moves out of the way. Good offensive movements from Cantu, but Palikte's defense was just as smooth as his offense. Palikte had to weigh in twice yesterday. I have to be around for that, and uh, he made his he made 115, but not on the first try. So don't know if that'll have any effect as the match this bout goes on. Uh, no idea, but just file that away in the back of your mind. By the way. Uh, yeah, the WBC has Cantu ranked number four. The WBO has uh, Palikte ranked number 15 in the super flyweight division. Two guys are really on the radar in their, in their division. I think the, the big fight on the horizon for both fighters is definitely the Chocolatito Roman Gonzalez fight. Cantu had his eyes on it, but I think the, the, the fighter who walks away with an impressive finish tonight takes one step closer to making that big, big money fight. Look today was the gold medalist in the Guam Open. 
So he, he had some significant successes as an amateur. His first fight in the United States of America right here tonight. So another uh, Philippine fighter is making his name in the sport of pro boxing. Kind of unusual that fighters we talked to talk about their camps. Polite's had a four-month camp. Stop! Let go, let go, let go. <clears throat> Coming from the Philippines though and getting the invitation from Freddie Roach to come train at Wild Card the home gym of Manny Pacquiao. That's got to do a lot for your confidence. Absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, certainly the other fact that the the great Roy Stop. Jones Jr. Company has uh, underscored Ashton Palicte as a as one of their guys. Yeah. I mean, uh, they're not going to sign uh, you know, him and Eggers here. Nice left hook. Tell them to give me a ride, my our driver from the airport here to the uh, D Hotel on uh, Wednesday. Also gave Oscar Cantu a ride, and he said they they had to make room for his five championship title belts. <laughs> nice, uh, nice hardware. I think we can call them straps. I like when somebody calls them a strap. You know what? They I got are. the title strap. And, and the thing is, is taking nothing away from Cantu. But there's so many belts out there for so many different organizations. Yeah. But there's only two that really matter. The pinnacle of the sport, you know. So he's collecting belts from up and coming promotions and sanctioning bodies. And that's usually the road you take to eventually Stop. arrive at those big name belts. But the bottom line there, Joe, is the fact that you're sure as hell a lot better off collecting those belts than not. The, <laughs> exactly. the alternative is not good. It means you're losing. You are 100%. Another all good exchange, and Felicte with a, a right hand, but Cantu standing strong as a hell of a flurry at the end of this round. Much to the light of the fans here at the downtown Las Vegas Event Center. The nightclub meeting the fight club. As is said, Felicte uh, seems nonplussed. He's getting married in a month, ladies and gentlemen. The young man's got to win. <laughs> we kidded him about that. Are you sure you want to go through with this? <laughs> and here we take a look back at some of the action. There's the one, two down the pipe, finding its home. Cantu answering back. Felicte doing a good job getting on his bike, using his defense. Lichter does a nice job getting on the ropes and encountering. His counter punching on the ropes is, uh, he's, he's well schooled. He's very fundamentally sound. Obviously, as is Oscar Cantu as well. And uh, little Oscar's got his hands full here. We're starting round six of a 10 rounder. And uh, I'm leaning very unofficial, very unofficial that maybe uh, the mighty Ashton Lichter is ahead on points. That the last round, round round five was the best round in my book for Cantu. I thought he fought back. I thought he, he met Palikte in the center. I thought he answered back with effective aggression. But up until that point, it just seemed like Palikte did a little more, did more damage, was the first to get off, was the more effective fighter. But again, JR, you never know what the judges are gonna watch. Absolutely not. Camera crew did a good job taking the inside of the ring, getting some good ang angles, some good shots. Our cameraman on the uh, two men on the on the apron. And by the way, the one man with the beard is not Billy Gibbons. <laughs> ZZ Top's uh, front man is not moonlighting here tonight. It's another gentleman with a very bodacious beard. Oscar Cantu is regaling on stories of uh, watching Monday Night Raw back in the day when I was uh, broadcasting Stop. there. I said, I was glad I was a good Stop. babysitter for you on Monday nights. What a nice kid. Sometimes you wonder, can a boxer be too nice? Stop! Let go, 
You know, nice, mean, friendly, unfriendly, that's all outside the ring. It's what happens when they get in the ring that matters. So some of the most, you, you meet Gennady Glovkin is, is such a gentleman outside of the ring. He's so friendly. He's so charming. You get him in the ring and the guy is an assassin. He's a cold-blooded killer. Get him up. Punch us up. Little Oscar having his first pro fight. Oh, man. Oh. First pro fight outside Texas. And great resiliency by Oscar Cantu. Because those shots are stiff from Ashton Palikte. Ashton Felipe, without a doubt, is tougher than a two-dollar steak. But I got to tell you, I love the uh, the mental toughness and the resilience Stop. of Oscar Cantu. Stop. Stop. Meaning we've got us one hell of a main event here, live from Las Vegas. Ooh, the I'm Tim. Bell Sounds, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for being with us. Round seven of our 10 round main event, scheduled for 10. Two flyweight titles are on the line here as Ashton Felicte from the Philippines try to follow in the footsteps of the great Manny Pacquiao and find great success in uh, pro boxing here in the States. Oscar Cantu. As we heard, the pride of Kingsville, Texas. His NABF Super Flyweight title is on the line here. And they're exchanging. Oh, nasty hook cross from Palikte lands on the chin of Cantu. Cantu still coming forward, fighting back. But that was a nasty two-punch combination. Cantu taking, can, shows us he can take some punishment. But uh, you're, you're, you got to think that if you're Cantu's corner, you'd rather see Oscar counter and get out of the way than stay in the in the in the pocket. Hit, and not be hit. Yeah. And, and where Oscar is planning himself, it's inevitable. You're going to get hit. Now, Jr. Let me ask you this: Leading up to this fight, the story between both camps was Cantu felt like he was the better boxer and Palikte was the more power puncher. But as it's playing out, it seems like Palikte might even have the edge in the pure boxing category. What do you think? I just think the guys get motivated when they when you hear they hear that the other guys are better boxer. Well, okay, I'll show you. I can box. Same thing with Oscar Cantu. People say he can't punch. He's got one knockout in his 14-0 record. And so maybe Os Oscar's uh, using a little bit of machismo just hang around the pocket a little bit longer than normal. You think that's affecting him in a negative way? Might be. Might be. I, I just don't think that Austin's going to get to the pay window standing in front of a guy with 18 knockouts and 21 wins. Not when you only have one knockout. That would be my point. Really been a great fight. Both been evenly uh, matched. They came in at 5-7 each. They came in uh, Felipe 115, Little Oscar 114. Sparkling one loss records both been fundamentally sound Obviously they have great futures in pro boxing ahead of them oh. <laughs> Cantu snaps back the head of Palikte just when we question the punching power He lets us know hey, I'm still in this good punch good counter punch there left hand by Oscar Cantu Nice counter punching round for Oscar Right hand, couple of them, finding their mark by Palikte. Well, this one is not for the weak at heart, I'll tell you. Yeah. Oh, we got ourselves a dandy, ladies and gentlemen. What a round. Hope you're enjoying it. On CBS Sports Network, we're glad you've invited us into your home or wherever you may be. And we're going to turn the corner and come right down the home stretch. And I think it's a... Uh, Nobody's got any distinct advantage here. I, no. I, I understand that the, whatever the judges have, you could have Pelicte a little ahead. I don't know. Perhaps can too. But bottom line is that close. 
you know what? I think those early rounds in my book were, were clearly Palikte. They were equal exchanges. If we take a look back at some action right now, you see the left hook land. Palikte snaps back the, excuse me, Cantu snapping back the head of Palikte. Boom, landing, both fighters trading. Both fighters giving as good as they're getting. But I thought those early rounds leaned more towards Palikte, but as the fight's gone on, it seemed to have evened out. And right now, it's any man's fight. Eighth round getting underway. Oscar Cantu with the uh, Pittsburgh uh, yellow on his uh, yellow, black, and gold. Go, stop! Only, only a Steelers fan would re refer to that as hey, Pittsburgh Yellow. That's right, man. My wife's a Pittsburgh lady. I ain't going down that hill. <laughs> Second fight of 2016 for Oscar Cantu. The third fight of the year for uh, Aston Felicte. And I have to go out on a limb here to say that I'm guessing this may be their most memorable fight of 2016. Hands down, absolutely. Enthusiastic crowd. On a great sports day in Las Vegas. And JR, I'll tell you what, I know we're only in the eighth round, but this is one of those fights that I would not, no matter what happens, I wouldn't mind seeing them run it again. <laughs> I nice left my officer sticking it in there. Yeah, at the break. Yeah, I was wondering. Hey, I think they're told protect yourself at all times. That's the rule. Oscar is got is known for his analytical approach to boxing. Great uh, fundamental skills, but I think we're seeing also that Oscar's a tough guy. Oscar is all is not all sizzle and no steak, but we know that Felicte has brought the steak all the way from the Philippines. What Oscar might lack in punching power, he makes up in heart and in chin. Get him up, get him up. No up. doubt, little Oscar could take a punch. Good left by Palikte. Ironically, neither man has gone off their feet in this match in, in this fight, and I, I find that very, uh, I don't know, a little head scratching. I would, I would have thought somebody would have been down by now. And it seems like we've been on the precipice of a knockout at any moment from either guy, and it just hasn't come to fruition. As, as Contu unloads on Palikte. Palikte almost looks offended like, hey, I'm the puncher Stop. of this fight. <laughs> I'm the guy that's got the heavy hands, not you. Counter by Little Oscar. Felicte missed that big right hand. They had evil intentions. And then a, a couple of three really nice counter punches by Cantu. And I'll tell you what, when a round is extremely even and Cantu is able to land three punches like that that snap back the head of Felicte, that sways the judges. He could steal that round. Absolutely. That is certainly possible. Man, this is a, another close one. Let's, let's take a look back at some of that action. You see Palikte coming forward. Cantu rolling under, landing a couple solid punches of his own. Palikte with the jab, the overhand. Cantu making a miss and making him pay. That's that. That's the golden rule in boxing. Make him miss, make him pay. When he ties you up, get out, punch. You did it. Oscar Cantu listening intently to his corner, and Ashton Palikte could not wait to get off the stool. Something tells me that the fireworks are just beginning to commence as we uh, start our ninth round of a scheduled 10 rounder. Exchange and stop, stop, stop. Palikte, 
Palikte calls a, he kind of relaxes a little bit there, which is a little bit unsettling at times. Yeah, he, he kind of stops and pauses in the middle of action. And he eats a lot of punches sometimes when he yeah, does that's that. exactly right. There's no timeouts in baseball. <laughs> Nice counter downstairs. Oscar with a couple of body shots that Felicte wanted everybody to know it didn't hurt him. Stop. Don't know if the judges will buy that argument, Your Honor. Well, I'll tell you, Joey, my next big sporting event will be the Sugar Bowl. January 2nd in New Orleans. You can't go wrong there. No, nope. I don't. I don't know if uh, is my ticket in the mail. I, uh, what happened? I didn't get the invite. I'll get back to you on it. Okay, okay. Don't hold my breath, right? And right now, it seems like Polikte is is he's just faded a half inch. Look at look at the speed of his punches. They just slowed down one tenth of a second, and that's allowing. Kantu to get back in this fight, to get back in this round. When they trade, look at that. His defense, he's just a little too slow to get out of the punches, to get out of the way. I mean, it goes without saying, both these men are just really outstanding fighters. Absolutely. Really and truly are outstanding fighters. Again, evidence of the concept that Roy Jones Jr. and his, his team uh, bring us here at Knockout Night of the D. The good versus the good. Hungry fighters looking to move up to stamp their body of work on a national platform. I got to tell you, JR, every card that we put on here in Knockout at the D, Roy Jones Jr. Promotions, has been stacked top to bottom with hungry prospects uh -oh. evenly matched that deliver amazing boxing shows. Ashton, what do you want, a flag? Okay, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> it's a uh, spirited affair. The award-winning uh, Jeff Houston. You know he's award-winning, Joey. He's award-winning, this young man. If that is his real name, Jeff Houston, by the way, he will be loco before this night is over. I can promise you. <laughs> if you're on Fremont Street, be careful. Hey, we got one round left. It is too close to call. <laughs> Two titles are on the line. This has been one of our, our finest fights, and we've had some great men events here on this series and it could Clean all up, come Clean down out. to this round it very well could and i i don't think that's a stretch whatsoever that's, i don't think that's hyperbole nabf and the vacant wbo intercontinental super flyweight titles are on the line two titles at stake the last of 10 Stop. rounds little oster can too defending his uh nabf Super flyweight title. He says, I am God's humble champion. And he's had a devil of a time avoiding the power punching of Ashton Palikte. But he's getting off first. He's landing first this round. It just seems like in the last round and this round, Palikte has slowed down just a little bit. Enough. Oh, as I say, he big cracks. Old, big overhand, right hand. Another. Watch the right. It'll turn out the lights. And yes, indeed, in Vegas, the party will be over. I am known for my barbecue sauce, and this match, this fight, this bout has been saucy. 
<laughs> Spicy saucy. Hard to believe nobody's left their feet. Certainly a testament to the willpower. Oscar doubling up on his jab. Avoiding the right hand. Counter punching expertly well. Very nice round for Oscar Cantu. Will it be the difference maker? 50 seconds and counting. And I would, I would just uh, detest being a judge for a fight this important to these two young men and this close. Absolutely. It seems like this round, Palate, he's found his groove again. He's found the home for that right hand. He's been li landing the cleaner punches. Again, that little short shovel punch, that right uppercut, sneaks it in, pops back to head again with it, followed by the overhand from the right. And now, now Palate thinking he's walking away with it. He's very confident right now. You can tell by his body language. He believes he did enough to win. Do the judges agree? JR, I think you and I are lost for words. I, uh, I think it's too close to call. I'm glad I'm not judging, as I mentioned. But a heck of a fight, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you enjoyed it as much as we have. Two titles are at stake. Oscar Cantu's undefeated record. The 21-2 and two record of Ashton Palikte in his first fight from the uh, Philippines. A lot of drama, a lot of backstory. And we'll have our winner momentarily on CBS Sports Network. CBS Sports Spectacular Fight Night Knockout at the D on CBS Sports Network is being brought to you by the D Las Vegas. Long on fun, short on ordinary. And by DLVEC. Visit DLVEC.com for upcoming events. Break down the latest in the National Football League as our panel of former pro quarterbacks get you inside the minds of the biggest stars in football. NFL Monday quarterback delivered by FedEx. Mondays at 6 Eastern only on CBS Sports Network. Well, we have been privileged with a tremendous men event here tonight. Too close to call for me. This old Oki can tell you that. Couple of titles on the line here as we take you back and show you some of the, the highlights. Just the power punching of Ashton Palikte may have been too much at the end of the day for Oscar Cantu, but I love the counter punching of Oscar. And little Oscar showed great fundamental skills. The fact that he could take a punch, he's tough, he has a big heart as we uh, navigate our way through this fight. Just great exchanges. No fighter in this contest really gained a distinct advantage for any substantial length of time at all. Really outstanding counter punching. A good shot there by, by little Oscar Cantu. But certainly the power of well advertised power of Ashton Palikte uh, was not false advertising. He is a he's a hammer and for 115 pounds he packs a wallet. So these two men have fought countered scraped survived a 10 rounder here in Las Vegas a slip. No one was knocked down. There was no knockdowns in the fight and this is our last round a very spirited round. Cantu staggered. And I, we really, both Joey Warner and I both believe this last round probably was the decision maker. And certainly Ashton Felipe playing the judges pretty well there, celebrating that he has won this fight. And, and there's only one way to find that out, and that's by going to Jeff Houston.
Uh, ladies and gentlemen, before we go to the decision, let's have a round of applause for the amazing effort from these two super flyweight warriors. After completing the scheduled 10 championship rounds, our judges send into the ring a split decision. Ricardo Ocasio scores the bout 96-94 in favor of Cantu. Adelaide Bird scores the bout 98-92 in favor of Palikte. And Patricia Morse Jarman scores the bout 96-94 to the winner by split decision from Bago City, the Philippines. He is the A split decision goes down here in our main event. And man, oh man, it was too close to call. How do you, obviously, if you're in the Cantu camp, you can certainly have a complaint emotionally. I get that. But man, look at it objectively, uh, it's hard to say the decision was wrong. It was that close. Could have gone either way. But it, unfortunately, it did not. As far as it relates to the good folks in Kingsville, Texas, as a pride of Kingsville, ventured here to Las Vegas, God, God's humble champion, had Jeff Houston. Ladies and gentlemen, we are now set for the knockout night at the D, main event of the evening. Scheduled for 10 rounds of boxing for the NABF and the vacant WBO Intercontinental Super Flyweight Championships. Presented to you by Roy Jones Jr. Boxing Promotions. The D Las Vegas, long on fun, short on ordinary, and neon star media. Brought to you by Art of Music, your number one source for collectible memorabilia. Visit artofmusiclv.com and Rival Boxing. Sanctioned by the Nevada State Athletic Commission, Chairman Anthony Marnell, Commissioners Francisco Aguilar, Skip Evancino, Dr. Dan Carpenter, Michonne Martin, NABF Supervisor in Attendance, Dwayne Ford, WBO Supervisor in Attendance, Michael Pernick, and our Executive Director, Bob Bennett. The three judges scoring on this championship bout, Adelaide Bird. Patricia Morse Jarman, Ricardo Ocasio. And the third man in the ring, our referee in charge of the action at the bell, Russell Mora. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the downtown Las Vegas Event Center, the temperature is rising, the lights are bright, and the main event has arrived. Fight fans of Las Vegas, everybody! Go! Loco! Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, tonight wearing black camouflage. His official weight, 115 pounds. His professional record is an impressive one. At 21 victories, with 18 wins coming by way of knockout against two defeats. He is the current IBF Pan American Super Flyweight Champion and the NABF Super Flyweight Challenger from Bago City, the Philippines, by way of Los Angeles, California. Please welcome Mighty Aston Balite. And across the ring, his opponent fighting out of the red corner. Wearing black, trimmed in gold. His official weight, 114 pounds. His professional record is perfect. At 14-0, with one win coming by way of knockout. He is the defending NABF Super Flyweight Champion. He is the fighting pride of Kingsville, Texas. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing Lil 
Centering, gentlemen. Okay, trunks here are good. Trunks here are good. Gentlemen, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want to remind you, protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. God bless you both. Touch up. Should be a good one, ladies and gentlemen. Ten-round schedule. As we take a look at the tail of the tape, Joey Varner, what do you see? And we see the same age, same height. Same weight, same reach on paper. These guys are almost identical. Right now, Oscar Cantu, the perhaps the more polished, pure boxer in this uh, matchup. We'll see how those skills evolve and develop as far as it relates to slipping punches and avoiding contact. Making them miss and making them pay. Nice, uh, nice intentions on that uh, big old looping a uh, right hand by Palikte. Didn't connect, but you saw the intent, the thought process, very evident. Cantu is the undefeated fighter here. Palikte has two losses. One loss, he says, was a, was just a robbery. He fought in Mexico. He thought he dominated his opponent, and it was a home down decision. But the other loss, he says, he fell in love with his power. He took training a little lackadaisical. He didn't do his best. He went in there thinking that he could knock his opponent out. He lost because of that, and he says a goal. Oscar Cantu, little Oscar, 14 and 0. Ashton Palikte, 21 and 2. Palikte, 18 knockouts on his record. Seven coming in the first round. Keep that in mind. Nice left by Felipe. We asked Felipe what are the keys to winning? Simple answer, keep punching. One of the things that the Cantu camp talked about, they recognized the punching power of Palikte, but they said when he loads up, he punches from his chest, he drops his hands. That's one area of his game that the Contu camp thinks that they can exploit, take advantage of, and make him pay. The Palikte camp also thought that the great record of Oscar Cantu was largely perhaps a product of the location, fighting mostly in the state of Texas. Which ironically is almost the same thing that the Contu camp said about a Palik day. They yeah. said he, him fighting in the Philippines. Everybody's got a story. And only one way to settle these uh, debates and discussions is what we're seeing right now.